New York City just effectively banned short-term rentals, the kind that you find on websites like Airbnb, Verbo, Booking.com, and a bunch of other sites that are like that. And we're starting to see more of these restrictions and regulations around the world in places such as Florence, Paris, Berlin, and even Bali. Airbnb is the big daddy in this rental space. And it used to be a really great thing. You could rent something from a local who then used that money to improve their own personal life. And also it helped the local economy. But now corporations and investors have bought up hundreds of properties in popular areas around the world, effectively driving out the locals who can't afford to live there anymore. Plus, Airbnb is not what it once was. It used to be more affordable and more customer focused. But now with a lot of increase in fees and common scams, a lot of us are thinking twice about using it anymore. So in this video, we're going to look at some alternatives to Airbnb and see how they stack up with the critical factors that make a stay most enjoyable. Before we dive in, hit that subscribe button if you're planning to travel or move abroad because that's what we talk about in our videos. We've stayed at a bunch of Airbnbs dating back to 2016, so we have quite a bit of experience with them. Yeah, there's a lot of horror stories online about phantom rentals and crazy hosts, but we've actually never had that experience ourselves. Our worst experience has been taking a three hour long drive only to show up to our Airbnb and find out that there was no toilet paper in the place. Yeah, so some of the things we like about Airbnb are that it has more space and a much more homey feel than a hotel. And they are still more affordable. We've been researching an upcoming trip and we found the hotels in the same area are two to three times more expensive than the Airbnbs. We also like that we can live like a local while we're there. We stay in local neighborhoods and we can also shop for our own food and cook our own meals. It saves us a lot of money and gives us a real feel for what it's like to live there. There are some downsides and a big one is gentrification. With all the conversions to Airbnbs, there is now a shortage in some areas for long-term rentals, meaning the prices for the locals are going up. And uh, there's a lot of extra fees with Airbnb now, including a cleaning fee that's on every bill. And then the host still expects us to clean the place before we leave. Yeah, that's just crazy. Also, we've stayed in some places where some of them have been great. Some of them, the cookware have been pretty bad. So we have started carrying some yeah. essentials like a spoon. Yeah. And actually, I have bought some of these disposable paper towels or paper or towels because they seem to like never have kitchen towels. The basics. Also, the Airbnbs are not as secure. We've been standing out on the street with all of our bags and luggage in the middle of the night before waiting for the code for the lockbox to get the key so we could get inside. And it's kind of, I don't know, it makes us feel really nervous to be standing out there in the night like that. We've also taken flights that get in early, but we can't get an early check-in. So we're kind of just stuck waiting around in the airport or at a restaurant until we can check in. We also may not be able to get a late checkout. Some places do offer luggage drops, but they don't all accommodate that yeah and there's also a lot of scams and crazy hosts out there we see this online all the time the phantom rentals the bait and switch where you show up for one and like oh sorry this one's no longer available but i have another one for you which is like a dumpster in the alley next door Th those things do happen and also the reviews online are not exactly reliable because if you leave a host a bad review then other hosts in the future can use that to not rent to you. If they see that you've left an honest review that wasn't favorable, then they might say, hey, I'm not gonna take that risk and I'm not gonna accept your reservation. So that kind of encourages people to not be totally honest in the reviews. Now let's take a look at some alternatives to see if we can find some better options, especially with all the new regulations going into effect. Yeah, there are other sites like verbo.com, hotels.com, housing anywhere, plus Valia, and all of these have basically the same bookings. It's the same people that are putting their properties on there. And unfortunately, they're all being affected by these regulations. However, there are some good pros to these alternative sites, such as lower fees and rewards programs. Yeah, it would be really nice if Airbnb had a rewards program for people who stay there quite a bit. The main drawback is that they have basically all the same listings and the prices are pretty much the same except for maybe some lower fees. Customer service and guarantees can vary by platform, so your protection may not be as good as Airbnb. Yeah, and if your goal is to not contribute to gentrification in these areas, then you're not helping out because these platforms use all of the same properties, so it really doesn't improve that. Another option are social media classifieds. Yeah, some long-term travelers, they'll go to a city and stay in a hotel for two or three nights, 
while they look for a longer term stay on websites like Facebook or Reddit. You can also ask your tour guide, your driver, people at restaurants or other digital nomads or travelers for some local recommendations. We've had people, tour guides offer to help us find spots to stay before. In Cuenca here in Ecuador, there is a website called gringopost.com. They have short and long term rentals and you can use that to, to find a place to live short term and other cities have similar websites to this. You can find these websites or social groups by searching the city plus rentals or expats or digital nomads. Some of the pros of going this route is you're often going to be dealing directly with local owners which is nice and you might get a better deal especially if you want to stay longer term like th especially three months or more. However you often have to pay up front or provide a security deposit you might run into a scam that does happen, unfortunately, and you don't have the same level of protection or guarantees. And next, the most obvious alternative to Airbnb and one we see recommended a lot online are hotels. And they're actually lobbying quite aggressively to put a ban in for Airbnb for their own greed-based reasons. But is it really viable to stay in a hotel for one to three months? Probably not because Hotels can be more expensive and unfortunately they do not offer discounts for long-term stays. However, you do get rewards so that could help offset some of that cost. But we have found when we've been researching our trips that, boy, they are a lot more expensive. Yes, we're researching a trip right now and the hotels in the same area are two to three times more for a month-long rental compared to Airbnb since you get that discount for staying longer. But there are some great benefits to staying in a hotel and one is that you have 24 7 service meaning you could check in any time day or night they may not have your room ready but at least there's a person there that could help you and that you could drop off your luggage with hotels are also a lot more secure they have security usually locked doors they have people on staff all the time you're not showing up in the middle of the night outside a gate with all of your luggage you can just go right in. Exactly. And they also have more amenities. So if you're really looking for things like a pool or a nice gym and an on-site restaurant, then usually hotels will have you covered there. One of the things I love about hotels is daily housekeeping. They come in, they make your bed, they clean the place up for you. And there's no additional charge for that like there is with Airbnb for your one-time clean out when you leave. There are some downsides and one is that they are not as homey. Yeah, it's like sleeping in a doctor's office waiting room in a lot of these hotels. And many of them don't have kitchens, which is a big drawback if you don't want to eat out every meal. You could be spending like 50 bucks a day if you have to eat out three times a day. Plus the hotel food options are not very healthy and we like to eat healthy. Sometimes on the breakfast menu, the only thing that we can eat is a bowl of fruit. Okay, hotels, how are you going to bring us back? Well, you can start by offering us a discount for a longer term stay of 30 days or more. We would really like that. And bring back those mini fridges and coffee pots and maybe even a microwave and a couple of bowls so that we could eat and our leftovers and make a little breakfast. We started bringing these with us. It's a little lunchbox thing, uh, but it would be nice not to have to travel with this. I will say in hotels defense that I have seen a few now that are bringing back some of the basics so that you can actually at least eat your leftovers. Yeah, and also add a few healthy options onto the menu, especially vegan, vegetarian, and gluten-free options, and not the junk processed food either that you think we all eat. We, we're talking healthy options and not just salad and rice. Next up on our Airbnb alternative list is Marriott Homes and Villas. Yeah, these are kind of a subset of the hotel category. It's run by Marriott and you're gonna have a higher quality standard there. They're basically condos, homes, villas that are run by local property managers that Marriott contracts with to offer these properties. There are some pros with staying at the Marriott homes and villas. And the first is that they may feel more homey. You also may get better quality compared to Airbnb. And you're gonna get those rewards points and that's partially because they are more expensive. So those rewards points start to add up quickly. Yeah, they are quite a bit more expensive than similar properties on these other booking websites like Airbnb. They also have limited amenities compared to hotels. So a lot of these are in condo buildings. So you might have some amenities like a pool or a gym, but it, in general, they're not going to have like a restaurant or a bar on site. They might not have other amenities either. And they also cause gentrification because a lot of these properties are owned by corporations or investors. So it's the exact same problem that you're going to have with Airbnb in that regard. 
The next alternative to Airbnb is apart hotels, also known as extended stay or apart suites. Yeah, we like these because they combine the best of both. You get the best of hotel living, but also with the amenities or the feeling of home that you get from Airbnb. Some of the major brands in the U.S. are Extended Stay America, Residence Inn, Fairfield Inn, there's Choice Hotels, and there's a bunch of others. Yeah, in other countries that haven't gone the full franchise route, you're going to find local apart hotels. They're going to feel a lot more personal. When we were in Cuenca, we stayed in Apartamentos Otorongo, and we really enjoyed our time there. Yeah, we stayed there on our exploratory trip, and when we first moved back to Ecuador after that, we also stayed in Gran Colombia Suites for a weekend and really enjoyed our time there. It's in El Centro in Cuenca. You can find these apart hotels just by searching for that term with the city name, and you'll be able to find a lot of the local options, and you can also re read reviews about them on websites like TripAdvisor. There's a lot of good things about these apart hotels. One is that they are usually locally owned so that they, they may be more affordable than the chains or hotels. And they also have similar amenities as hotels like early check-in or late checkout. Some have pools and gyms that they're a lot more secure. Also the reviews online are tend to be a little bit more reliable. And they have their own kitchen so you can cook your own meals which is so important to a lot of us especially if you're doing long-term stays. The owners can help you with recommendations and tours and just in general things that you need to know about the local area. And it's a great way to meet other travelers like Apartamentos Otorongo. They have an outdoor patio where the guests like to gather. In fact, that's how we made almost all of our first friends when we moved to Ecuador. They also have less impact on the locals because they are multi-unit locations and not just an individual unit in a condo building or in a neighborhood. Some downsides are that the quality standards may vary quite a bit from one place to another. Also, they tend to be a little bit smaller, not nearly as spacious as a full condo or a house. And your kitchens are going to be quite a bit smaller. So, you know, it's not going to be like a full kitchen that you're going to get in a condo. Next, we're going to talk about hostels and they kind of have a bad reputation in the United States. However, they are much nicer in other countries. Yeah, you're going to find many of the same benefits that you get from a hotel, only they're going to be a lot cheaper. You also have access to a shared kitchen, so you won't have to eat out all of the time. And the reviews tend to be a bit more reliable. You're going to be around a different variety of people. A lot of young people like to stay in hostels, which can be a lot of fun if you want that young energy. Yeah, and you're going to be able to make some new friends because there's usually communal hangout areas and you can go meet other travelers and, and forge long-term relationships with them. There are some downsides. You might have to share a bathroom or stay in a room with a bunk bed, uh, but there are private rooms available with private bathrooms and real beds. There might not be as many amenities as you're going to find in a hotel, and sometimes there's quite a bit of a party atmosphere, so if you like to go to bed early like we do, a hostel might not be the ideal place for you because they might be partying right outside your door. Is there a perfect solution or a one-size-fits-all for long-term travelers? Not really, but you can find a good balance. Yeah, we personally like apart hotels as a good option because it provides the best of both worlds. And if you go with one of those local, locally owned apart hotels, you're going to get better rates than any of the national chains. We also like the idea of going to a new place and staying in a hotel for a couple of days, getting a lay in the land, and then moving on to a longer term rental. As a reminder, we share lots of additional information over on our website. So scan this QR code or go to ameliaandjp.com to learn more. If you enjoyed this video, we think you'll like this one next. Yeah, let us know in the comments if you have an Airbnb alternative that we didn't talk about. Before you go, leave us a like, please, and we will see you all in our next video. Ciao. Ciao.